going to discuss about the transmission and uh, transmission is one of the very important uh, components uh, and it is one of the important process whereby it enables uh, the power to be transmitted from engine to the wheels which are on a road this is transmission and as far as the transmission is concerned high transmission is required engine is developing power wheels are moving on the road and uh, once when this is uh, once when the power developed by the engine if it is direct can it can the engine power be directly connected to the uh, wheels which are on road can it be yes it can be done but it is not fruitful and efficient at all the conditions okay so engine whatever the power which is generated this power if it is connected directly to the vehicle yes it will do and it, the vehicle will move on the road if the road is flat but if the vehicle is moving on the steep hill and if it is moving down the steep that duration there the power which is developed by the engine it has to be converted to the wheels according to the situation demands by the engine system and that uh, it is done with the help of the transmission system and what are the transmission system what are the components of transmission system and as far as the transmission systems are concerned it is composed with clutch which already we have discussed gearbox propeller shaft and differential here these four components together constitute the transmission system in any vehicle okay when the vehicle it is started from a standstill or when attempting to negotiate a steep grader that duration the engine would not provide sufficient power and the vehicle would stall and during this duration what is required is less torque is required to move the vehicle on ground compared to the vehicle which is moving on the steep hill okay whenever the vehicle is moving on the steep hill more torque is required whenever the vehicle is moving on a road less torque is required and the torque which is produced by the engine it is called torque output and the torque which is supplied to the wheels which are on road it is torque input and this transmission system whatever the components which are named right now clutch gearbox differential and propeller shaft these all will constitute together will supply the required amount of torque to the wheels according to the requirement of the engine conditions this is what the engine will do the in the transmission system will do the transmission system will supply the power developed by the engine to the wheels which are on road okay there are different types of uh, transmission systems are there semi atomic and atomic transmission systems are there which are used in recent years and as far as this uh, semi atomic and atomic transmissions are concerned this is again according to the requirement according to the application of the vehicle these uh, types of transmissions can be achieved and adapted and transmission this is a mechanism where and which transmit the power which is developed by the engine to the wheels which are on road this is what the transmission will do transmission it is a mechanism which transmits power which is developed by the engine to the wheels which are on road here onwards the transmission is in the same sense that it is a mechanism which provides suitable variations of the engine torque at the road wheels according to the conditions which are required by the engine by the road wheels of the engine and here we are going to discuss about mainly already we have discussed one component the clutch and now in this we are going to discuss about the gearbox and gearbox it provides the required amount of uh, torque to the road wheels how this gearbox will and what now before 
we start discussing about the gearbox what the transmission system as i was telling transmission system it is composed with clutch gearbox propeller shaft and a differential gear to transmit power from engine to the road wheels this is what the uh, this thing is concerned and here the clutch and gearbox the main objective of this clutch and gearbox these two vary the ratio of torque output what is the torque output the whatever the torque produced by the engine that is called torque output and whatever the torque supplied to the wheels on the road this is called torque input okay and the clutch and gearbox will vary the ratio of torque output to torque input and here what are the major functions of transmission system already this we have discussed while discussing the clutch okay the transmission system its main function is it disconnects the engine from the driving wheels when required and transmission system okay the engine is connected to the driving wheels when required the transmission system will be connected to the engine to the driving wheels whenever it is required and another important function of transmission system as i said it changes the ratio of torque output to the torque input as again i will repeat whatever the torque develop whatever the torque developed by the engine that is called mm -hmm. torque output whatever the torque which is supplied to the wheels which are on road this is called torque input and another very important uh, transmission function is the drive the transmission system turns turns the drive through a right angle now we should discuss we have seen what is transmission system and we have seen what are the function of transmission system and what the transmission system it is composed of okay transmission system it what it does is it supplies the power developed by the engine to the road wheels the transmission system is composed with clutch gearbox propeller shaft and differential gear now we should discuss mainly about what the gearbox what is gearbox what are the objective of gearbox what are the functions of gearbox what is the purpose of gearbox why gearbox is necessary these are all the parameters which we are going to discuss and as far as the gearbox is concerned it is one of the transmission system it is one of the component of the transmission system which maintain the engine speed at the most economical value under all conditions of vehicle movement okay so gearbox it is one of the component of transmission system which maintains the engine speed or the torque at the most economical under all conditions of vehicle movement on the road an ideal gearbox an ideal gearbox would provide an infinite range of gear ratios so that the engine speed should be kept at or near that of maximum power which is developed whatever the speed of the vehicle on the road and these are the what is gear gearbox will maintain the speed and it will provide the required torque to the wheels to suit the requirement of the vehicle and the application of the vehicle and why the gearbox is necessary why the gear ratio is necessary you must have seen in uh, the if you are driving a car you can see generally there are four to four to five gear ratio will be there one is neutral one is first gear second gear third gear fourth gear and uh, one more gear will be there that is called reverse gear these you must have seen in the car while you whenever you drive the car okay what are the necessity of the gear and the gear ratios and the gearbox okay the main necessity of gear ratio it depends on two important parameters the main necessity is 
the variation of resistance to the vehicle motion at different speeds on the road okay and another is the variation of tractive effort of the vehicle what is the tractive effort the uh, uh, wheels which are on the road and the friction produced by the road this is called the tractive effort the variation of tractive effort of the vehicle available at different speeds according to the load and speed of the engine okay this is the necessity by gear ratio at these conditions different gear ratios are required and these different gear ratios are possible with the help of gear box as i was telling generally there are five gear ratios generally in some cases there may be six to seven gear ratios in that is on special applications of the vehicle what are the five one is the first gear uh, second gear third gear fourth gear and the reverse gear okay now why the gear box is needed what are the purpose of gear box okay gear box will provide the speed and the torque conversions because of the limitations of internal combustion engine what are the limitations of internal combustion engine the power output and the cooling and the lubrication and the combustion efficiency these are the limit and one more the compression ratio these are the limitations of ic engine okay the main purpose is this gear box will provide the required speed and torque conversions whatever the limitations which i quoted as per the internal combustion engines are concerned gear box will facilitate the change of direction of output shaft for reversing i was telling generally there are four to five the generally you can see the last one that is uh, supposed to be referred as the reverse gear okay whenever we want to take the vehicle in the reverse direction this reverse gear is used okay and the gear box will the automatic gear boxes are used to reduce the load on the engine by manipulating the torque and the speed or the manip here manipulating means the required amount of torque will be provided will be supplied with the help of this gear box to the wheels which are on road this is what we have and the gear boxes have the option to select always option to select one of the several different gear ratios what are the different gear ratios according to the condition whenever you are starting the engine you are not starting directly on the fourth gear first you are starting and you are placing that uh, in the first gear and after picking the uh, some small some amount of speed then you come to second gear then third gear then if the road is flat if you want to into the speed you can go with the top gear that is called top gear and whenever the engine is in the stopping this thing you may have to reverse on certain situations whereby we can use the rear reverse gear that means the gear box have the option to select one of the several different gear ratios according to the uh, application as far as the driver is intended to drive the vehicle and the conditions of the road okay gear another important uh, gear box purpose is once the engine has reached a number of revolutions per minute it is advisable to increase the gear to reduce the engine rpm and to reduce the wear on the engine allow more control and greater speeds better acceleration and better fuel economy as i was telling the engine is started and after starting the engine what we are doing is we are using the first gear okay so first gear after reaching a particular speed then again we have to change the gear ratio to the second gear to have better control as per the speed and better control as per the uh, wear is concerned and again third fourth reverse according to this thing and here we have several ratios that several gear ratios can be achieved only with the help of this gear box okay and another important uh, purpose of this gear box this gear box will 
have a provision to do the opposite that is provide an increase in output shaft with reduction of torque that is one overdrive one another component we are going to use that is overdrive the component what we are going to use and now we have seen what is gear box gear box it is one of the component of transmission system okay and what gear box will do gear box will provide the different gear ratios to the wheels according to the requirement and it converts the power output to power the torque output to torque input according to the required listing and now we have also discussed about what are the why the gear box is necessary what are the purpose which may which necessitates the gear box in the transmission system now we should see what are the different types of gear box what are the different types of gear box so sliding mesh type of gear box constant mesh type of gear box synchro mesh type of gear box planetary type of gear box these are the four different types of gear box which are categorized as far as the this thing gear boxes are concerned what are the sliding mesh gear box constant mesh type of gear box synchro mesh type of gear box and planetary type of gear box okay and another way of this gear box uh, classification you can see manually operated uh, selective type of gear box in man manually operated whatever the uh, four we mentioned there the sliding mesh type of gear box it is one manually operated gear box constant mesh type gear box synchro mesh type gear box planetary type of gear box another type of gear box is overdrive another type of gear box is semi automatic gear box another type of gear box is automatic transmission gear box now these are how the gear box are classified and these gear box are used according to the type of the vehicle according to the application of the vehicle and on different specific applications different types of gear box are incorporated in the transmission system of the vehicle now we should see what is this sliding mesh type of gear box so this is what is this sliding mesh type of gear box this is one of the manually operated type of gear box okay now i will tell you uh, with the help of figure what how the sliding mesh gear box will be there here you can see in the figure lay shaft okay now here the gears are fixed and main shaft is there and clutch gear will be there clutch shaft you can see and here different types of gears you can see first and reverse gear you can see third and fourth gear you can see second you can see what is this how this operates and what are the component it you can see the figure you will have the idea in this sliding mesh type gear box the power comes from the engine to the clutch shaft the power comes from the engine to the clutch shaft you can see and then to the clutch gear the power from the engine comes to the clutch shaft and from and then the power comes to the clutch gear which is always in mesh you can see which is always in mesh with gear on the lay shaft the you can see i will, I will bring the cursor here you can see the clutch gear it is here, okay always in mesh with the gear on the lay shaft on the lay shaft all the gears on the lay shaft all the gears on the lay shaft 
are fixed to it and as such they are all the time rotating when the engine is running and the clutch is engaged you can see all the gears on the lay shaft are fixed to it and uh, you can see all the gears all the time they are rotating as long as the engine is running and the clutch is engaged and the clutch is engaged okay now and another listing how it works is there are three direct you can see there are three direct gears okay first gear second gear and third gear there are three direct gears and one reverse gear you can see okay there are three direct gears and one reverse gear okay so you can see okay first and third gear and you can see second and uh, high speed gear that means first gear and second gear not first gear and first gear and uh, reverse gear second gear and third gear it is referred as top gear which is used to uh, increase the speed of the vehicle that duration this third gear it is used this is how the sliding mesh will going to operate and it will help and in uh, earlier vehicles this type of gearbox it is in it was incorporated in the uh, vehicles okay another very important type of manually operated gearbox is constant mesh type gearbox constant mesh type gearbox see in this type of gearbox all the gears are in constant mesh i will show and i will explain with the figure you can see the figure okay so this is the constant mesh type of gearbox the main shaft is there here also a lay shaft is there okay the gears are fixed on main shaft as well as lay shaft okay on the main shaft the dog clutch type of clutch are used and clutch shaft is there here also same thing first the power is uh, the uh, power comes from the engine to the clutch shaft then to the clutch gear the similar thing what we noticed in the previous type of gear and uh, here also we have a reverse gear and here also we have three more gears three gears and one reverse gear okay in this type of gearbox all the gears are in constant mesh with the corresponding gears on lay shaft the gears on the main shaft which is planed are free in constant type in constant mesh type gearbox all the gears are in constant mesh with the corresponding gears on the lay shaft the gears on the main shaft which is planed are free the gears which are placed on the main shaft are free free to line on the main shaft the dog clutch you can see two dog two clutch of dog clutch they are used okay the dog clutch are provided which are free to slide on the main shaft the dog clutch are provided which are free to slide on the main shaft the gears on the lay shaft the gears on the lay, lay shaft are fixed the gears which are on the main shaft are fixed when the you can see i will explain when the left dog clutch okay when the left dog clutch is slide to left by means of the selector mechanism okay when the left dog clutch is slide to the left by means of the selector mechanism its teeth are engaged with those on the clutch gear its teeth are engaged with those on the clutch gear and we get the direct gear when the dog clutch is sliding left 
when the left dog clutch is sliding left with the mechanism, that time what is going to happen is this dog clutch, okay, this uh, the the teeth of the dog clutch are engaged with the teeth on the clutch gear and the direct gear we are going to opt the direct gear we are going to opt and the same left dog clutch same left dog clutch however when it is uh, sliding to the left whenever it is sliding to the left okay so now we have seen whenever it is sliding to the left the teeth of the dog clutch are meshing with the teeth of the clutch gear okay now the same left dog clutch if it is sliding to the right if it is sliding to the right makes the contact with the second gear makes the contact with the second gear okay here we have two gears here we have two gears i'll bring that this is one gear this is this is another gear now what is going to happen is when the dog clutch is sliding left the teeth of the dog clutch are missing with the teeth of the clutch gear and now we are going to get the direct gear now the same left dog clutch if it is sliding to the right okay makes contact with the second gear make the contact with the second this is how see again i will repeat if the left dog clutch sliding to the left direct contact we are going to get the left dog clutch sliding to the right we are going to get the second gear this is all about the left dog clutch now we have one more dog clutch that is right dog clutch okay the movement of this uh, right dog clutch the movement of this uh, right dog clutch the movement of this uh, right dog clutch to the left to the left results in low gear results in low gear results in low gear and the right clutch when it slides to the right we are going to get the reverse gear we it connect the reverse gear i will repeat once again the right dog clutch if it is sliding to the left it makes contact with the low gear generally we say it is first gear okay and the right dog clutch sliding to the right it makes contact with the reverse gear that time we are going to get the reverse gear and this is how the constant mesh type of gear box will operate i hope you understood i will repeat once again left dog clutch if it slides left with the mechanism then we are going to get the direct gear and the left dog clutch slides to the right slides to the right then we are going to get the second gear the right dog clutch slides to the left we get the low gear or the first gear what we speak okay the right dog clutch slides sliding to the right will connect to the reverse gear this is how this constant mesh type of gear box will operate okay and in this another speciality is in this constant mesh the corresponding gears on the lay shaft are in constant mesh with in all the cases this thing and now synchro mesh type of gear box as far as the synchro mesh type of gear box is concerned it is exactly similar to uh, the operating principle of this uh, synchro mesh gear box it is similar to what we see uh, we seen in case of uh, this thing what is this previous one okay now 
what is this synchro mesh type of gearbox see i will tell you i will come and i will explain here here also you can see the left dog clutch the right dog clutch here also we are going to have four gears in the uh, main shaft the lay shaft the gears which are uh, attached in the lay shaft are fixed and are rotating as long as engine is rotating and the clutch is engaged this is and uh, the gears which are this thing the same gears which are uh, meshed with this thing main shaft is there is flying free to move okay now what is this uh, synchro mesh type of this thing and uh, this uh, synchro mesh is concerned exactly it is similar to constant mesh type in that uh, all the gears in the main shaft are constant mesh with corresponding gears on the lay shaft okay in synchro mesh type of gearbox okay it is similar to constant mesh type in all that the gears on the main shaft are in constant mesh with corresponding gears on the lay shaft the gears on the lay shaft are fixed you can see the figure the gears on the lay shaft are fixed to it while those on the main shaft are free to rotate on the same okay the gears on the lay shaft are fixed to it while the those on the main shaft are free to rotate on the same on the same means on the main shaft the working of this synchro mesh type of gearbox it is exactly similar to constant mesh type but the only difference between is in this uh, uh, there is one improvement we can find in synchro mesh type of gearbox compared to the previous one constant mesh type of gearbox what is the improvement what is the employee provision is provided in synchro mesh type of gearbox okay the improvised provision of synchro mesh device which avoids the necessary of double d clutch okay if there is a double d clutching happens the vehicle will get a jerk and that is avoided and in the case of this synchro mesh type of gearbox the parts which ultimately are to be engaged the parts which ultimately are to be engaged are first brought into frictional contact which equalizes their speed after which these may be engaged smoothly okay exactly similar and operation of this synchro mesh is exactly similar to constant type mesh type of gearbox okay only what is, what is the working principle of constant mesh so the left dog clutch if it's slight left what is going to happen okay so we are going to get the direct gear the left dog clutch slides to the right and we are going to get the second gear okay here again the gear box dog clutch which is in the right side which is in the right side if it slides the rep we are going to get the low gear and the right gear box if it slides to the right it connects to the reverse gear it connects to the reverse gear this is the operation and the operation is similar but there is an improvement in synchro mesh type of gear box whereby the double d clutching is eliminated in case of synchro mesh type of gearbox which is a problem in case of constant type mesh gearbox okay so this is how now we should discuss about the before we look into the third type of uh, gearbox we should see what is this uh, synchronizer see why is the synchronizers are required synchronizers are required these are the component which synchronizes between gearbox and the uh, propeller synchronizers why these are required synchronizers are the devices which bring two adjacent members to the same speed before allowing sleeve to engage them 
the main function of this synchronizer it is a device which is used to bring two adjacent members to the same speed before allowing the speed the speed of the sleeve to engage them the two elements what are the two elements two, what are the two adjacent element i was telling synchronizers are used to bring two adjacent members to the same speed before allowing the sleeve to engage them what are the two adjacent members one is friction clutch and another one is tooted clutch the synchronizers this device will bring these friction clutch and the tooted uh, clutch the speed of these two adjacent members the same speed before allowing the sleeve to engage them okay, okay. another important uh, function of this uh, synchronizer is it, it locks the positive engagement until speeds are synchronized okay another important function of the synchronizers are the synchronizers will lock the positive engagement until speeds are synchronized and the synchronizers establish the positive engagement and the required power flow to the wheels which are on the road then the synchronizers are spline on the cone shaft and they are fitted to the gear into the cone shaped area of the collar the outer portion of the collar i'll show the figure the outer portion of the collar slides so that the dog teeth engage the gear so you can see these are this is the synchronizer okay so you can see this is the component so which uh, this this is this is called the to this total this is, is called the synchronizer okay okay it synchronizes the uh, what is synchronizes it uh, make the speed of friction and uh, one more member same speed so, so that it will be this thing speed of friction clutch and toothed clutch both speed will be brought to the same speed before the sleeve engages okay so you can see this is the figure which shows the synchronizers this is the figure which show the synchronizers and another important type of gear box is epicyclic or planetary type of gear box epicyclic or planet planetary type of gear box epicyclic what is this you can see the figure this is the epicyclic or planetary type of gear box it, it is clearly it is the figure itself is a self explanatory this is the figure which shows this is the figure which shows epicyclic planetary gear epicyclic or planetary gear box you can see one arm is there you can see centrally the sun gear is there and at the out ring gear is there and there are three planet gears are there three planet gears are there and all the three planet gears are connected to the centrally one sun gear is there and the uh, planet gear which connect the sun gear that link it is called r that link it is called r okay so then this what is this epicyclic or planetary gear box okay so this epicyclic or planetary gear box it consists of uh, uh, generally 3 to 4 epicyclic or planetary gear sets here it is shown only 3 generally it consists of 3 to 4 epicyclic or planetary gear sets a simple gear set has a sun gear and whatever the number of planet gears are there it is connected to the central sun gear okay and a simple set gear set has a sun gear about which the planets turn around about which the planets turn around these planet gear are carried by a carrier and a shaft and also mesh internally with a ring gear which is also called annular or 
internal gear sometimes it is called internal gear different torque ratios can be achieved with this type of gearbox epicyclic or planetary gearbox will provide different types uh, type, different torque ratios according to the requirement of the speed of the engine or load acting on the engine different torque ratios that is speed ratios are obtained by making the part stationary similarly by locking the two parts with each other a solid drive a direct gear is obtained that provision is there with the help of epicyclic or planetary what what provision so different torque ratios can be obtained and direct gear can be obtained with this type of epicyclic or planetary gearbox epicyclic or planetary gearbox okay. now you can see here i will show what are the different uh, this thing can be obtained with this the table which shows at different conditions of the speed of the engine which are the driving member which are the driven member which are the stationary member in case of epicyclic or planetary gearbox and this provision is provided only in this type of gearbox and which already we have discussed the previous synchron synchronous mesh and the constant mesh and the, another one constant mesh uh, type of gearbox this arrangement this provisions are not there whenever the forward slow motion speed the sun gear is the driving member and the planetary is the driven member and ring gear is the stationary member similarly forward slow and similarly forward fast for forward fast whenever the uh, speed required in the forward direction very fast fast speed is required then driving member will be planetary gear and the driven member will be ring gear stationary member will be sun gear similarly for reverse fast whenever the vehicle is expected to take the reverse at fast speed by then the ring gear will be the driving member the sun gear will be the driven member and the planetary gear will be the stationary this is the provision what provision different uh, Uh, torque ratios can be obtained for achieving different speeds of the engine and that is possible by using this epicyclic or planetary type of gear box okay then what so far we have seen the manually operated gear box and what are the types of gears used okay so we have seen gears are there which type of gear okay there are different types of gears which are used okay the first if you look into spur gear spur gear the advantages of using spur gear in the gear box the spur gears are simple and rigid and it is it the space required to accommodate is less and spur gear can join two parallel shaft okay then what are the disadvantages associated with spur gear the disadvantages associated with spur gear is the spur gear produces noise during operation of the engine and another disadvantage major disadvantage associated with spur gear is it warms out fast and quickly now these are the uh, spur gears which are used in gearbox and another type of helical gears are also used in gearbox and now we should see what are the advantages associated with helical gear and what are the disadvantages associated with helical gear now what are the advantages load can be divided on more than one teeth in case of helical gear helical gears are light in weight helical gears can rotate without vibration at higher speeds and helical gear work easily and helical gears does not wear out fast okay the advantages associated by using helical gear in gearbox helical gears okay can take the load can be equally divided in more than one teeth helical gears are light in weight 
if it is light in weight the balancing will be easier helical gears can rotate without vibration at high speed and helical gears work easily and